and thanks for coming to this innovative workshop. So the first thing I'd like to say is that the city of Kitchener has to model the behaviors that we ask of our citizens. And I think, unfortunately, tonight we didn't. We missed a big opportunity. One of the topics was accessibility and inclusion. And unfortunately, City Hall wasn't as accessible and inclusive as it should have been. Uh, the gates for the parking downstairs were closed. We should have had it open like we do for our council nights. It should have been free and accessible. And um, unfortunately, I believe we charged the Social Planning Council, so they've done all the hard work to organize this. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking that that's an opportunity missed. This, the first thing that I'd like to say about accessibility and inclusion is that we've really learned a lot about what this means now. I was part of a group called Visitable Housing, working with the Social Planning Council. And it takes the issue of accessibility just to the ability to be able to visit so that people with disabilities can visit into homes. And I think that's really critical. And so we know things like physical barriers are an issue, but so are things like just having our sidewalks clean of, of leaves and snow. So that's something that the, the city can take a leading role in. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the issue of social planning for the whole community. You know, the community is made up of everyone, and so we need voices of experience at the table. And one thing that is missing is the fact that people with lived experience aren't at the table. So on the out-of-the-cold issue, things like that, we need critical voices at the table on an ongoing basis so that we're not talking about them, we're talking with them. And that's the critical piece. It's about process. And if we get the process right, we'll get much better solutions and outcomes. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. And I'd, I'd like to begin by thanking the Social Planning Council for bringing us together to talk about these important issues. Long before this particular election campaign started, I placed an importance on helping to create a healthy and resilient Kitchener, one where every resident is treated with respect and has access to the assistance and services they require to help them lead full and complete lives. During my time on council, I've worked on a number of initiatives that have supported my constituents and our community as a whole, including things like the COPS Youth Mentoring Program. Um, I've sat on the Grand River Accessibility Advisory Committee and been involved in uh, processes on council that uh, brought about this pedestrian charter, citizen engagement, and computer and wireless access uh, throughout our community. For me, this is an, an issue that I, I have a great deal of, of passion about because my family came here as immigrants, and I don't come from a, a well-to-do family. My father was a uh, my father was a, a car mechanic. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, and uh, we we learned to uh, to live with uh, having fairly basic uh, means. As mayor, I'll continue my commitment uh, to uh, all in our community and have woven the ideas of accessibility, fairness, and inclusion throughout my uh, comprehensive plan. I'm focusing on, on strong neighborhoods, on a growing economy, and also on uh, a, a better Kitchener. Things such as making sure that we have good paying jobs for everyone in our community, things such as ensuring that we lead in terms of customer service leadership uh, for all throughout our community, things like open government which help and ensure that everybody has access to the, the data and information that they need. I believe the mayor needs to be an advocate for the communities within Kitchener, and I'll work to facilitate and participate in conversations at the regional, provincial, and federal levels to make sure things that are important to our citizens uh, are addressed going forward. We, I, tonight, I ask for your support on October 27th by voting Barry Verbanovic for mayor. Thank you very I much. I did a lot of listening tonight. Uh, I think I got to almost every table, and. Um, it was interesting, the first one that I sat down at was uh, the, the one about the environment and, and the gentleman said that uh, the environment encompasses everything. Uh, and, he, and he was quite right, I, I just sort of thought, thought of it in terms of the sort of greenhouse gases and various other things. Uh, that we all sort of jump on David Suzuki and dams and all the rest of it. But, but basically, I think in the long term what he was saying was, the environment is the citizens of this great city. And, and they're the ones that create the environment that we live in. And they're the ones that have, from, from just the different tables that I went to tonight, I was just so impressed that they have great ideas. And, and there's so many, this has been one of the biggest turnouts that we've seen. And, but what came across as a recurring thing from, from the environment to accessibility, 
uh, to the strong neighbourhoods, to the access to information, there was one recurring thing, and it was that they weren't being listened to. See, they can hear a pin drop when I stop, right? But they weren't being listened to. So, I'm there to listen. I'm a fresh face, fresh ideas, uh, and, and I'm just open to listening to all, what all these people have. There are so many advocacy groups, and I think what we as politicians now need to do, instead of talking from the top down and telling you all the things that we're going to do, we're going to start listening to you because you have the ideas and the wherewithal. One of the last ones that came in in the strong neighborhoods thing was strength in numbers. And that's what citizens have, is strength in numbers. They just need the access to the information, and, they, and that's a two-way street. So they need people that will get the information back to them on how they can make changes, uh, how they can get direction, and how they can jump in. Thank, Thank you. you, I'm Marcus Strazzo. I'm running for a candidate for Ward 1, the city of Kitchener. Um, Today was an interesting night. Uh, trying to get a little bit of everything was very difficult. There was a lot going on. I think that you know we could have spent hours at each of these tables trying to talk more about this. But one of the things that I take from this is something that I've taken from listening to the people at the doors that I've been knocking on for the past couple of months. Um, it's that you know it's one thing to keep on having forums where we listen or surveys where we listen, but the follow up is what people really need, is what they really want. It's not just the listening. The listening is kind of the easy part. We can keep on doing more of this. What we need to do is follow up. We need to go back to the people, explain to them why we're not doing that, why we are doing this, why this is happening, why that's not happening. It's more of that follow-up. The more inclusion you give people and more follow-up, more information you give back to the people, the more they'll come back to the table again and say something. If you ignore them right away when they say something, they're going to give up. That's what we have, uh, this animosity out there right now towards politicians at every level, I feel, comes from that, is that they're not being listened to. And they just feel like there's just, they're just saying things or we're asking certain things because we want to hear them or we're saying that we're making a platform saying, okay, well, if we ask that, hey, we did our job and that's the end of it. I think we need to do more to actually get people's involvement into this. A lot of the issues that we talked about tonight, um, you know, one of the things I kept repeating at a couple of tables out there, a couple of the tables out there, is that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. These issues that we have in the city of Kitchener are nothing new to most cities across Canada, America, and the world. We need to look at good solutions that are being out there right now that we can follow up on. And also the realization that there is no solution to a lot of these things. You're not going to solve homelessness. You're not going to solve addictions. You're not going to solve these things. These aren't solvable issues. What we can do is we work with them on many different levels, on every different case, in many different styles. That's how you do it, a multi-level approach, try to do the best we can for everybody. At the end of the day, the city, the city of Kitchener is the last resort for people. We need to make sure that we all look after everybody. Thank you very much. One of the topics tonight was civic engagement, and that's something that uh, is important to me. I believe that we need a better and more meaningful public engagement in the city of Kitchener. I commend the city for some of the things they've started. The Your Kitchener, Your Say program is excellent. I think it needs some help, and I'd like to see that continue. Um, I believe that informed and engaged citizens are the best thing we can do for the city. It gives better buy-in, and it lets the citizens be part of the process. For 15 years, I've been regularly attending city council, and sometimes it's, I'm almost alone in the gallery as I sit there. And I think sometimes that's because people feel that they don't have a voice. So some of the questions that, that uh, were discussed at that table tonight were, um, what can nonprofits do to help and community groups? I think they can help to promote, and more importantly, I think they can take part. Uh, what, what do we need to do to encourage better uh, civic participation? Again, we need to promote it better. We need to improve your kitchen or your say. But most importantly, I think as a council, what we need to do is we need to listen and we need to take into account that public's voice into the decision making. I think that's the important part. Not only do we need to be listened to, but that, that needs to be part of the, of the decision. And how should elected uh, uh, officials be accountable? Well, I think it's, it's every politician's uh, duty to promote it 
to listen, and to engage with the citizens. If you're engaged with the citizens, again, I think we'll get better buy-in, and I think that'll give us better results in the end if we listen to our <coughs> citizens. Thank you very much. I'm Wasai uh, Rahimi, candidate for Council War II. Um, uh, my friend uh, put a word that nothing is impossible if we really work for it. Anything could be solved. <coughs> Not uh, only here in Canada, I have lived in so many countries. Uh, I have seen politicians who go to people, ask for votes, and they make promises. We will do this, we will change the whole world for you, and we do this, and we will do that. After they are elected, they never seen, and no one could reach them. That is why people hate to be in politics <laughs> and to be involved in, in politics. Why, why we have, in my world, we have 26% turnout. We had in 2010. Why uh, people uh, don't like to go and vote? Because we never kept our promises. I, I hope uh, it, it doesn't matter if I am elected or not, it does, I cannot uh, change the world, but I hope whomever is elected in my world uh, keep his or her promise and uh, do well for people, especially we, we are in a world that we have a large number of underprivileged population, I hope they, they work hard to make a life better for them. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening. My name is Grayson Zielstra, and I'm running for Ward 2 in Kitchener, for Kitchener City Council. I'd like to say thank you to the, region, uh, to the Social Planning Council for putting this event together tonight so that the community can learn more about the candidates. I live in the Stanley Park neighborhood of Ward 2 with my young family of four. We are active in helping our neighbors and fully participating in, in the volunteer, cultural, and sports opportunities that living in this great city provides. We have such a great network of volunteers in our community, and I think that's something that we should be proud of. Tonight I had the opportunity to sit, to discuss, I sit in, discuss at roundtables in terms of access to information, digital inclusion, community social planning, and strong neighborhoods. At the heart of these discussions was a desire for a better community. We have much to be grateful in our community. However, it is that drive for something better that makes us a great community. To make this happen, we must improve communication on all levels. In addition, we must promote, uh, promote an environment for positive change and provide the tools and resources that will empower our community. It's this continued communication with all levels, with government, with our community leaders, with our volunteer <coughs> network, our social workers, that we can increase this dialogue to make the, those positive changes. I appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts with the many people tonight. And given the talent and desire we have in our community, amazing things can and will happen. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the Social Planning Council for setting up this evening. It was a tremendous opportunity to, uh, to be involved with a number of groups that uh, wouldn't have had the opportunity unless we did it through this kind of a forum. Based on what I heard in the five groups that I attended, there are three common threads. And I feel that it's very important that uh, we, we look at these threads as, as a way of moving the community forward. The first is the need for better communication, with a need for council to listen to all the voices in the city who have input on a particular topic. With this communication, which involves a great deal of active listening on the part of council, is a need to ensure that there's a feedback loop so that the community is aware not only of what is decided and why, but how the community input was utilized in arriving at the decision. 
Secondly, there's a need for openness and transparency. It was interesting listening to people tonight describe how difficult it is to access the city's website and really access in depth the kind of information that they're looking for. <laughs> and thirdly, we can talk to her blue in the face, but at some point in time we have to actually start doing something. One of the uh, particular needs for council is to actually pick a specific area and make a decision and start moving forward on it. One of the ones that came across very clearly when we talked in the, uh, the poverty reduction uh, section was the need for supportive housing. We need in this city to ensure that every single person has a place to live and live comfortably. Thank you everybody. Thanks for uh, Social Planning Council for hosting this event. What I heard at every table were the same four words. Community, communication, connected, and collaboration. So where do we go from there when we hear all those same words? Every, every table talked about them. Every table talked about frustrations of not feeling like they were heard, feeling like that, that people were not taking action. And when I look at the vision for the Social Planning Council, it talks about addressing a variety of areas but all focus on collaboration with services and the public who may or may not be disenfranchised or marginalized or feeling alienated. So that's not exact wording of their mission and vision statement, but it's, it's the way I interpreted it. And I think that that's how we have to move forward when we've been listening to all of the people who came out tonight to talk <coughs> about inclusion, about accessibility, about neighborhoods, about poverty. And if we listen to them and we start to actually take action, so I'm talking about integrated approach, next steps, and action-oriented. So we've done the listening, now we need to take the steps forward and actually do some action. How can we, we can't solve everything, but we can actually do something. We can actually do out of the cold. We can actually have programs for people so they feel included. We can actually make transit accessible. We can actually have supportive housing for people. And I think those are the things that I want to focus on on my next term of council. Thank Good you evening. So much. I'm Mary Hendon Thorne, and I'm running for Ward 5 for City Council. I want to thank the, uh, the, form, the form organizers tonight. It was very, very informative. And one thing that I really saw was people's passion and love for the city of Kitchener and the region. And I think that's exceptional. We're very lucky to have that. I think one of the most important issues that I have facing my ward is the environment. I think people talked about the connectivity to the rest of the uh, city of Kitchener, so that they could be able to walk or bike, and I think that's very important. They talked about protecting the green space, that's also very important. They talked about the recycling that we're doing and how proud they are of that, and they talked about the green bin issue. You know, people say they, they don't know how to use the green bins. Well, my mother-in-law said to me that she freezes her leftovers until garbage day, and that's how she deals with it. Maybe we can just raise awareness about that. Sorry. Um, another thing, too, is voter engagement. That's something I'm so terribly passionate about. I'm so passionate about it that I've worked with Immigration Partnership to develop a course and raise awareness amongst all the citizens about the importance of voting and all the responsibilities of government. That's something that I'd like to continue working on and make that a success. Poverty is something also that's very important. And you know, although we're the, the, um, out of the cold is a big issue, we talk about that a lot, I think we don't talk a lot about the working poor. And that's something that we have to partner up with the community, all of it, and we have to discuss how we plan on solving that issue and, and figuring that out. I think we have the opportunity to become a smart city and work on our innovation and technology that we have available so that we can have uh, the websites are accessible with all the information that people can use. And I think that's an important piece to making us grow as we grow as a region. The other thing, too, that I found very disappointing was somebody said, um, from a disability uh, point of view, that attending festivals and thing like, things like that is very um, difficult because we don't make space for them to be able to enjoy and have a view and to get there. So I think these are all issues that we can improve on in the city of Kitchener. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Vernon Sawyer, and I'm running for council in Ward 6. Tonight is a real eye-opener for me. I really enjoyed seeing how the people 
came together around the table, shared ideas, offered constructive solutions. Sometimes there was no solution, but they still helped each other work through it. This involvement reminds me of what I think a neighborhood should be. If we build strong neighborhoods, they're the building blocks of our city. If people are comfortable, if they're welcome, if they feel they're part of the city, I think they'll share ideas with others. The feedback will go back and forth, and we'll build on that. The city needs to take a role to help connect with those. Give those communities, the organizations, give them the tools to educate so maybe people feel comfortable with their city. If they're comfortable, maybe they'll feel there's a little more value, that they're part of the city. So when they write that taxpayer's check to pay off their debt to the city for their taxes, maybe they won't regret it quite so much. If you feel part of something, if you feel welcome, I think it makes life a whole lot simpler. Let's work, let's bring the city back together. We have to start in small pieces, so let's start in our organization of the neighborhood communities. Tonight was a great experience for me. I really thought the round table method was a particular plan. I, I hope this continues. I look forward to trying to help the city grow. I look forward to bringing people together and making Kitchener strong again. Last Thank December, you. I was at the region and listened to several social needs delegates present their lack of resources for their situation. A couple of months ago, I was at the City of Kitchener Council Chamber when people from out of the cold made presentations. I was moved and shocked at what I heard these two evenings. The region and the city have all kinds of plans for various nice-to-have things, but seem to put the wellness needs of people close to the bottom of the list. I'm a firm believer of, quote, a society is only as good as it takes care of its people in need, end quote. I want people to have the dignity of having a room or two that they can call up like their own. I heard it again this evening. Wellness needs should be easily accessible. I suggest, suggest this basic investment will be offset by saving in other areas, such as emergency room costs. I will advocate for low-income housing with easily, easily accessible services. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Social Planning Council, for organizing this worthwhile all-candidate meeting tonight. So one of the issues that I picked up was people not feeling connected in their neighborhoods. It came up both at the civic engagement table as well as strong neighborhoods. So I'm thinking, what makes our neighborhoods livable and connected? There are many factors. But most importantly, we need to get to know our neighbors. We have to have places where we can walk to. We have to have enjoys. We have to have central gathering spaces in the community where they can be outdoor swimming pools, recreation center, libraries, or a school. We need opportunities such as English classes for newcomers in our neighborhoods. We need parenting classes for new moms and dads in our neighborhoods. There need to be reasons and pleasant settings for people to come together in our neighborhoods. People really enjoy a greater sense of well-being while feeling connected with friends and neighbors. So what I hear again and again is that we have, uh, we have really a lack of community gathering spaces, especially in the ward that I'm running for from Ward 7. It's really important to have places in Ward 7 where neighbors can come together. They could be farmers mark, temporary farmers market, they could be community center, they could be outdoor pools, but we need places like that. And this is going to be my priority when I get elected. I am looking at developing public-private partnerships to bring some of these places, some of these community gathering places in our ward, Ward 7. Thank you very much again for having me here tonight, and thank you Social Planning Council for organizing the all-candidate meeting. Good evening. My name is uh, John Wolf. I'm running for regional chair. Now, there's lots of choices this time. It's always been more or less an acclamation for Mr. Sealing. But as regional chair, I'd be head of a council called the Regional Council. And part of that is infrastructure. Now, we have to look after that better than it has been. 
Also, there's other issues that are ongoing. Now, I, my background is I've had uh, lived in the region my whole life, been educated publicly, got degrees from uh, U of W in biology, and that's how my policy and guidance would go. Because I believe we need clean air, clean water, and we got to stop the urban sprawl. Now, right now, they have this 100-year plan where Mr. Sealing and his committees or whatever have a pipe going to the lake, get water for future <coughs> generations. Now, my ideas would not include that. And I know how these artesian wells work. And I know the OMB board has policies that follow the money. Now, I think the environment is more important than the money. And there's a lot of people who don't understand that. Now, I can build a strong case to stop the urban growth, and we have to stop and just take a look at what we have right now, because there's a fair amount of debt there, and it's more unmanageable with what we have. I can't read that. What does that say? 30 seconds. Oh. Anyways, uh, I hope you vote for John Wolf, because that'll mean a change for the better, and we need a change after 30 years with Mr. Sealing and his committees. Because if you don't have clean air or clean water, you don't have a community. And that's what kills a lot of these past historical Aztecs. They lose their water system, and next thing you know, they're done. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I, I was in and out because there are multiple events on tonight, so I was listening to some of the conversations. I'm happy to be here again tonight. Uh, I just wanted to remind me of something that I always tell people when I talk about the why this region is so great and why it's so strong, and it's a long history that we need to, to nourish uh, more in the future, and that is the role of grassroots groups in this community. Uh, early on, before the advent of many programs in social services and health services across the province of Ontario, they were here in this region. In fact, we were the model for many things that happened elsewhere in the province, and that's because they started at the grassroots. And what the role of government really was is to work with them and nurture them and help them along, and we have that model today. And I just want to make a plea to say uh, we need to continue to nurture the role of grassroots groups in this community. We need to work cooperatively with them because we don't have all the answers. By putting our strengths together, we can do that. So the issues of growth and growth management we're facing and going into the future really need the strength of that grassroots participation. We're in this together. We share the community. We want a great community. And we got to make sure that we listen to one another and help one another. Thank Anyways, you. I'm Moira Sharon McGinn. I'm running for regional chair. My little handle on Twitter is a chair who cares. And you don't even need to be on Twitter to check me out there. You can just go on to the, the web and put it up there in the URL and, and, and I'll come up. I, I believe that you have a choice for regional chair this year. I believe that you really do have a choice. And I believe that the lived experience that I'll bring to that horseshoe will make all of the difference. It'll complement the business acumen that's there. I've been on and off of social assistance in our region for over 20 years. I gave birth to an amazing young man, 25 years old today, um, and at that time I found myself having to go on assistance. I know firsthand the struggles that we have here when it comes to accepting everybody where they're at without judgment, and that covers everything. My father was the Vice President of Ingle Metals. He was also an ordained minister. And one of the proudest, proudest moments I know he's ever had in his life was when three bodies came together for his retirement party. And they asked him, what, what made the difference, Albert? What made the difference? And he said, the difference that we made, because they were able to successfully negotiate two collective bargaining agreements without a workage, in, uh, without a workage a stop in their workage or the need for mediation assistance. And he says it was all about feelings. That's what it was all about. Everybody felt like they gave, and everybody felt like they got. And I believe that that's what we need to do. I have a beautiful trailer that's sitting in my, my um, driveway right now. It's one solution to one type of homelessness that we have in our region. Fifteen years ago, I was one of those grassroots groups. We still have the problem today. We've done enough talking now, we need to start doing, and I want to make that happen here in the region. So, check me out on Twitter, a chair who cares. I have zero seconds remaining. This has been the best format, I love it. Thank you. My name is Oscar Oroz Colarnell. I'm running for regional chair 
under the auspices and support of the Alliance Against Poverty. But fundamentally, I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen who's weary of voting for candidates who just embody pieces of my dreams. I'm tired of compromising visions by voting for a so-called winnable candidate who offers crumbs of progress under the name of realism. Instead of an upstate real estate boom of growth upon growth, with our vulnerable citizens <coughs> being ignored or thrown under the bus in the name of efficiencies, we offer a vision of concrete justice through public transit, brick and mortar for the homeless, no more studies, a living wage and full participation of our citizens, by the way, including Cambridge. Instead of talk tax austerity, read hysteria, we call for closing the wealth gap. But mostly I'm a dreamer, a dreamer who was inspired 45 years ago when the dreamer of dreamers, Martin Luther King, poured out his lifeblood in Memphis, Tennessee. We dream and we give our dream speech. And that dream, I think, I'm a historian by profession, and I think of that dream that was enacted over a hundred years ago in Lawrence, Massachusetts in the famous textile strike. They thought they couldn't do it. There were 20,000 textile workers from 51 different nationalities, most of them women, that brought a cruel company to its knees by winning that strike. And they left us a legacy as well. And that legacy was embodied in our community's co-op housing called Bread and Roses. This is their song. As we come marching, marching, unnumbered women dead, go crying through their singing their ancient call for bread. Small art and love and beauty, their flagging spirits new. Yes, it's bread we fight for, but we fight for roses too. That's what our candidacy is all about. Thank you.